On to some college football. There were some upsets this week. Florida beat number 11, Tennessee, 29-16. to 16. It was a little boxing match at the end of this game, too. Dude, they were straight up <laughs> squaring up. I don't know what the hell happened, but they were like, do these guys realize that they're wearing helmets? Yeah. Like, what's a punch really going to do? I, I didn't understand that either. We were talking about this, I think, yesterday. Even wearing guys. pads. Like, you try to punch somebody, like, like up by yeah. like, the ribs, they're wearing pads. Yeah. I don't get it. And they were, like, doing the fucking dance. Dude, they said, we're seriously squaring up. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> it's probably better than the UFC fights on Saturday. Hey, honestly. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Also, Missouri... Beat number 15, Kansas State, 30-27. to 27. Harrison Mevis. Okay. Yeah, I think it's Mevis. Or maybe Mevis, I don't know. Mevis, Mevis. I watched the end of this one. It was good. 61-yard game-winning field goal to win. Yeah. That's really, that's incredible for a college kicker. You don't see, I mean, not every NFL kicker, I don't think, you know, can hit a 60-yarder. No. And this guy just, no. I, mean, and I also believe is the it's longest. Fun. Yeah, longest in kick SEC. in SEC history. Yeah, right. <clears throat> Impressive uh, stuff. Uh, Cowboys will be calling you soon because I still don't trust this USFL guy they got <laughs> who's also in the MLS. I don't know about him. He's also in the MLS? He also was in the MLS. Oh, 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 oh gotcha. Wow. So, he's getting paid better, though. I'll give him that. Yeah. Uh, number one, Georgia. Number three, Florida State. And number 10, Alabama. All had, were all tested this week. Yeah. Georgia was playing South Carolina. Florida State played Boston College. And Alabama, I don't know what the hell's going on with Alabama, but they... Like, they I thought they were going to lose to South Florida. I, the, for a little bit, it was like they can't they can't do anything on offense. They this, finally got it together. And, and this isn't the former national champion USF Knights. This is <laughs> South Florida. <laughs> no, this yeah yeah exactly <laughs> USF yeah USF not no, UCF. UCF USF yeah. So good good for these you know good for Georgia good for Florida State good for Alabama in my opinion because this tells them hey we're not just going to run rapid right. all this year like, we, like it's kind of like. I love a good test. Especially early against a team that you know you should beat, right? It humbles them. <clears throat> yeah. These guys are like, you know what, maybe, you know, we had an off week. It tells us that we have some work to do. Yeah. I like it. I I, I was pretty tuned in on the uh, Georgia-South Carolina game. It was interesting because Spencer Rattler's South Carolina's quarterback, he actually kind of tore it up for the first, like, quarter and a half. Right. And then Georgia's defense just put the clamps on for the rest of the game. And uh, it was enough for them to turn it around. Spencer Rattler... I never liked the guy. No. I mean, watching me and Garrett were oh, you yeah. know, big into the QB1 show that was on Netflix. He was such a prick in that in that show. And, you know, he had his, like, little scandal. I don't even really know what it was all about. But his little scandal in high school. And he's just been kind of a punk ever since. In the words of Garrett Nahiwa, he's not a guy I'd have a beer with. No. <laughs> I don't even know if he's old enough to have a beer. He probably is now, but. I wouldn't have a beer with this guy. No. Not even for the cloud to say, hey, Spencer Rattler had a beer with him. Wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people will be like, really? You had a beer with that guy? Yeah. Like all out of everybody? <laughs> yeah. Right? So. <laughs> Game of the week, though, in my opinion, given the hype, given Coach Prime, given the head coach for Colorado State who was talking smack to Prime, which oh, yeah. I never think is a good idea. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was ballsy. He almost pulled it off. But that almost was pulled it off. Yeah. But number 18, Colorado beat Colorado State 43-35 to in double overtime. Colorado trailed by 11 in the fourth quarter. Game tying touchdown and a two point conversion with 36 seconds left in regulation. This was. I'm glad I stayed up to watch. This. I was gonna say. So you did. You did watch this game, right? Yeah, I was yeah. watching on Fubo, and of course Taylor was watching. So we were going back and forth, just <laughs> trading punches, <laughs> just tug of war exactly, over, the, exactly. over the TV. Thanks again for the uh, for the account number. Yeah. Um, Next time we go over to their house, you got to log out of the. Out of Dude, the I almost fucked around and put Taylor Martin instead of Men's Warehouse, yeah. <laughs> just so he's like, "Oh wait, what?" <laughs> uh, uh. <clears throat> great game and Nick Warren, friend of the show, friend of ours. Yep. Big Colorado hater. Yeah. <laughs> he'll, he'll he'll probably tell you himself. And I gotta say, I was rooting for rooting for Colorado State because. They talked their shit, and they were this close, in my opinion, to backing it up. They blew it. They blew it. Yep. They blew the perfect chance to go into Colorado, beat them, and say, you know what? It was personal for yeah. us. Yeah. Because Prime was like, oh, they made it personal, like all that kind of shit, you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Which I like. He's a, he is a great leader of men, Deion Sanders is. You could tell. He's they got the want, right They want to play for him. Obviously, his sons want to play for him and all that stuff. But Colorado State was this close. They had it. They, I feel like they had it in their hands. Yeah. And they fumbled it. They really did. I mean, yeah. I mean, tough tough game for them, but 
I guess you still got to give uh, got to give Colorado credit for staying in there. Yeah. When they were down eleven, I was like, this game's not over, but they weren't looking great. Like Colorado State was, you know, playing some solid defense and moving the ball with relative ease for a lot of the game, really. Yeah. But uh, also a tough blow for Colorado losing Travis Hunter, who's expected to miss a few weeks. Yeah, their star who plays both ends. Yep. Th- this play was very interesting. Yeah. It looked like it was blatant targeting and like pretty head, cheap. Like head hunting almost. Yeah, pretty cheap. Or not maybe not head hunting, but like bounty. Like kinda of like bounty game. Yeah. For, with the Because because obviously the like the ball had hit the ground and the guy still hadn't even touched Hunter yet and, and leaned into him when he was kind of vulnerable. First you know, first seeing this, easy for me to say it didn't look that bad. But I'm not out there taking a cheap shot <laughs> from college kids. Right. So you know, <clears throat> bummer. I don't know if anything's happened to the guy who hit Travis Hunter. He got so, something has to happen. He definitely got a penalty. I don't know if it's like suspension worthy or not, but he definitely got a penalty. Just get, just given all the hype, like I said, and given the tension, I think there's a bunch of personal fouls in this game. There are a ton of penalties. I think Colorado State had what 19 penalties, something or, ridiculous. Or 18 penalties. Yeah, for they shot themselves yards. in the foot big time. So I don't feel bad for them in that regard because you did this to yourself. Exactly. I kind of forgot about that fact. Yeah, but they, there's there's no excuse for doing something like that. No, you no, can't. No. And I will give the, their coach credit. He acknowledged it. He's like, did he? we, yeah, we like we can't be doing it. It was even early in the game when he did it. Mm-hmm. When he said it, he's yes, like, it was. Um, they're you know they're. Uh, we, I know this this is a rivalry game. We pumped it up, but you, you can't be you know having stupid penalties like this all the time. I also would love to know what the <laughs> ratings were for this game, given. Timing wise, tough to have big ratings, but I'm sure on the West Coast, you know, it was probably pretty big. Yeah. yeah. They play Oregon next week, and speaking of Oregon, eight Pac-12 teams. Unbelievable. Honestly. In the top 25. You happy? I think it's kind of cool for you know last, last hurrah of yeah. the Pac-12. USC, Washington, Oregon, Utah, Oregon State, Colorado, Washington State, and UCLA are all in the top 25. It's it's nice. It's, it's nice cool. To see. It's cool. I mean. If I had to put my money on it, I would say like no more than six would be still in the top twenty-five at the end of the season. It's, it's early, yeah. But um, nonetheless, but nonetheless, it's cool. It's it's good. Uh, it's a good final final hurrah for the for the conference. Yes, and it sounds like Oregon State and Washington State are doing their best to try and create something out of the Pac-12 going forward. But that's going to be a tough <clears throat> tough ask. And I, I think it's funny because you thought I was going to go. Without saying what happened to your Stanford Cardinal <laughs> on Saturday, do you want to tell the people what happened? For, yeah, for those who don't know. Yeah, so um, we have this new coach. His name is Troy Taylor. He's former coach of Sacramento State, who and he built up the program pretty well. And Stanford played Sacramento State. Stanford paid Sac State six hundred thousand dollars to play them. Yeah, that, that's a better way to put it. We didn't just play him. <laughs> we paid him. <laughs> paid him to play. <laughs> and the, I think the intention was that we were supposed to kick their ass. But that's the, that didn't happen. Uh, Sacramento State won. Yeah. Pretty uh, pretty embarrassing, to say the least. It's just, I mean, I, I we've been, we had this conversation a couple times already. But I had asked you, is this the worst loss in recent memory for Stanford? And you said... I can't think of one. Can't that's worse, of- yeah. I mean, since I've been a fan of Stanford, I can't think of what... Like sure, they've been upset as a as a good team. Like they're a bad team, but they're still losing to. I don't even think they're in Division One. I'm not so sure. I, say, I don't I'll, think they I'll, are. I wouldn't. I guess they're losing they're to an, like an FCS school. We asked your dad, who's been a Stanford fan for longer, and he said they probably lost to Davis. Yeah, they might have lost to Davis like in that year or two like before Harbaugh came in. But and Davis is probably on the same level. Yeah, I think they actually are in the same conference as Texas. So I mean, you're you're Cardinal. Down tremendous. Tough scene. Right now. now we did have a lot of guys. I'm not trying to make excuses, but just the reality, they did have a lot of guys transfer out after David Shaw left. So that makes sense. They're going to have a pretty thin yeah. roster this year. But uh, yeah, Troy Taylor's got some work set, cut out for him. But give it to Sac State. Beat Stanford. It's probably one of the biggest. That's probably the biggest win in their program history. Got to be one of them. Yeah. And they're three and zero. Yeah. So good for them. He left them uh, with a with a solid program. Let's put it that way. So good for Troy. <laughs> good, good for him, but not good for him. <laughs> I, want, I, I did you happen to catch anything what he said after the game, just about no. like, the correlation between him coaching them the no. last year? Yes, he was there like the last three or four seasons. Yeah, yeah. the only thing I caught was like mid game they had this like little excerpt about him saying like when they when the AD scheduled Stanford for him, 
you know, because you see a future schedule going, mm-hmm. you know, going forward. He's like, oh, cool, we'll go beat him. And then, of course, he's on the losing end, but with Stanford, just kind of ironic. I bet behind closed doors, he's just laughing. He's like, what are the odds? Yeah. Are you kidding me? I'm kind of curious who they hired to be their coach. Like, if it was like a hire within the program, like if they promoted somebody to head coach, or. And can you explain to me why? Big, you know, Stanford's a, you know not a huge name school, but they're a name. Yeah. Why do why do big name schools in general pay lower level teams to play them? Like, why does it take them to pay them an obscene amount of money? Like, shouldn't these lower end schools want to play these guys for not free, but yeah. Just to get their names out there and have people see them. I'm not totally sure what that process is like. I mean, I gotta imagine it's just because they want to have a game that's sort of a preseason game on their schedule in a way. Yeah. Um, a tune-up, of course, that didn't work out for Stanford <laughs> the way they thought it would. But I think that's kind of the idea, and you know, they don't like Sac State's not going to want to go play Stanford every year and not get anything out of it. Yeah. You know? I think it's just kind of. The big schools giving back to the smaller schools. Okay. <clears throat> and Stanford's record right now is one and two. So they got, they got a game under their belt. If one one, they can't not go and winless. <laughs> They'll be like Colorado. Maybe just win one. Yeah, like right. last year. I, I mean, they're probably going to be the underdog in every game in the Pac-12 this season, based on what I've seen so far. They got freaking steamrolled by USC, which is not a shock. No. But it's not going to be a fun season. Speaking of Colorado, did you mention they are playing Oregon this week? Yeah. Did you say that? You said that. I did. Yeah. Yes. Okay. They're playing Oregon this yeah. week. <laughs> That's gonna be a real test. I mean, TCU. That was a big win early in the year, but they got a real game this come coming weekend. Yeah, we're gonna get to it because that's one of my picks. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's recap our week three picks really quick. Let's see if I can get these up. Um. Ooh. So you went two and one. Damn. Stuffed. Sorry. You're good. By the way, did you see that Nick Chubb got carted off the field? Did he? Yeah. He was great for me last year. Yeah. That sucks. Uh, so, yeah, Gage 2-1. and one. Nice work. So, you are now... You are now... 5-3 and three overall. It's early in the season, but between college and NFL, I'm feeling like <laughs> him right now. <laughs> you are the fucking knock, man. Knock on some web. I'm feeling good. Yeah. You scored on LSU winning big against Mississippi State. Uh, you also got West Virginia winning pretty easily against Pittsburgh. Um, your one loss was Michigan State plus 16. They got rolled by Washington, which that was a tough one. Yeah. Big number. I'm not, uh, gonna, I'm not gonna give myself too much credit because I'm I'm pretty much doing these blindly. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> In a way, because it's just like I've said before, it's hard for me to just know everything about college football. Right. I'm a fan of it. Just you're 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 working on Saturdays. I'm working on Saturdays. For me, one and two this week that puts me at four and four on the season. Uh, better, the, than, better than better than going on three. Yeah, I like you know five hundred. That's fine. Gives me a chance in the very last week. If I'm five hundred, I can finish over five hundred. There you go. <laughs> uh, UNC, I got the that was my only win. They covered seven and a half against Minnesota. I lost that, of course, Kansas State game against Missouri and Tennessee got rolled by Florida. Um, Gage, you go first on your picks for college this week if you got them. Yes. <clears throat> I'm picking Colorado plus 20 and a half. I don't think they're – I mean, it's just a big number. It's huge. And Oregon has put up some numbers this year already. But I think Colorado – I just don't see them getting rolled by more than 21 points. I don't mm-hmm. think I don't think Dion's going to let that happen. I would like to think not either, and that's why I did consider this one as well. But, you know, it, it could be like the, the hype train just – comes to a screeching halt, and that's why I stayed away from it. Yeah. So that should be should be interesting. Well, I do think Oregon wins this game. I do too. That's going to be the biggest test Colorado's facing. Obviously, going to Autzen Stadium. They win by seventeen. <laughs> there you go. Which would you know that'd be a healthy win for Oregon. Absolutely. But Twenty and a half. Yeah, that's a big number. So I don't blame you. Humble Colorado, big time. Yeah. Next one I'm picking. I hate to do it because it's Ole Miss, but I'm picking Ole Miss plus six and a half against Alabama, based off the fact how Alabama played last week. Could I see them coming back and after last week and rolling Ole Miss? Yes, but Ole Miss plays Alabama pretty well, seemingly every year. It's it is one of those funny ones, and then it, it, that'll happen like for three straight years, and then Alabama will just steamroll them the next year. But not, yeah. this, not this week though. Yeah, not, <laughs> not this, this week. week. Alabama's we'll got to figure out the quarterback position too. Apples, absolutely. Number four, Florida State is not picking. Minus one at Clemson. I had picking all road dogs, like you said. Yeah. 
Uh, they're the uh, Florida State's the one favorite you're taking, but yeah, one all, all, all road teams. I'm taking all road teams. Excuse yeah, me. yep. I just like I like the number four that Florida has as their ranking. Yeah, and it's only one and a half. Yeah. I, the I, funny I, thing though is Clemson. If there were more than 25 teams that were ranked, Clemson would be number 26. They get the most votes of any team not in the top 25. Okay. So they're they're still right there, but Clemson did have that embarrassing loss to Duke early this year. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then my last pick, I'm picking. Number 22, UCLA, plus 5 against 11, Utah. Nice Pac-12 matchup right there. Should be a fun one. We're gonna, Yeah, we got we got six ranked versus ranked matchups, three of them out of the Pac-12 this weekend. It's nice. going to be a fun weekend of football. Can't wait to watch two of them, maybe. <laughs> well, yeah, you're going to get the, that Pac-12 <laughs> after dark action. I love Pac-12 after dark. <laughs> That's your bread and butter in college butter. football. I love like the 5 o'clock games. It's usually good. Yeah. And then, yeah, Pac-12 after dark when I... Go to Devs, and she's like, "You're still watching college football." <laughs> now, she's like, "The game is still on." I'm like, "Pack till after dark." Yeah, you didn't know. <laughs> now next year it's going to be ACC after dark. Big Big Twelve after dark. Big, 12 after dark. Big Ten after dark. ACC after dark. All of it doesn't have the same ring to it. It's going to be uh, yeah. It's going to be different. Not not terribly excited, but I'll just have to live. <clears throat> so we just buy. Pack twelve shirts with like a logo on the front, <laughs> just uh, for for nostalgic reasons. I'm a Cal guy, kind of. Yeah, there you go. I don't, I don't really have a team that I root for, but yeah, <clears throat> I just appreciate it. They're kids, you know. Yeah, they're playing for pride. <laughs> they really and are. maybe possible NFL contracts in the future. <laughs> All right, my four picks are going to be. I'm taking number nine Notre Dame plus three at home versus number six Ohio State. My boy Sam Hartman, quarterback of the the Fighting Irish. I usually root against Notre Dame religiously, but we're taking them this week. No pun intended. Plus the points. No, no pun talking about religion. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> um, also taking the number 24 Iowa Hawkeyes plus two touchdowns at number seven Penn State. Penn State's one of those teams that I just don't feel like they roll teams. They just they play, always play tight games. Okay. So I'm, I'm taking the Hawkeyes to at least stay in the game. Not, not calling an outright win, but at least stay in the game. <laughs> Uh, my Pac-12 pick this week is going to be number 21, Washington State, plus two and a half at home versus the number 14, Oregon State Beavers. Sorry to Hannah and Jasmine. They were just at the game this last weekend. Were they really? Yep. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, uh, Washington State being at home, I, I like that, that number. Also taking number 16, Oklahoma, minus 14, uh, my one favorite this week. Boomer! Boomer Sooner again at uh, Cincinnati. You think Nick listens to us? I don't really think he does. I think he watches our YouTube stuff. Or not our YouTube, but Instagram stuff. Yeah, it's okay. And then he, you know, gives us a little chatter. Can he pick it? Small hands. <laughs> no, he's all right. Finding pickings. Um, yeah, I'm taking the Sooner, so I don't really think Cincinnati is all that anymore. So Boomer Sooner. Horns down. <laughs> Horns down. 